Hi guys, welcome back to our lesson. So we are still looking at exploring different types of functions. Now we're going to look at if it's two functions in one plane, how do you then talk about them? What are the key ideas that you need to see there whenever you're looking at it as it's one plane, Cartesian plane, and I give you two graphs, maybe a line graph and a parabola. How do you then talk about them? How do you analyze or how do you even find where they are intersecting each other, right? So remember that. This is going to bring in some nice algebra that I know that you are familiar with, which is simultaneous equations. But let's have a look at it. Now, firstly, the point of intersection, which is what we need to first know. So intersection of two lines. This is where the x and the y values are equal to each other, right? So in simple terms, if I say to you f of x and g of x are intersecting each other, it means you can then say at the point of intersection, f of x is equal to g of x, right? And then you know that if you say f of x is equal to g of x, you will be only left with x and then solve for the x, take one of them, substitute the x, and solve for the y. That's the simultaneous I'm talking about, right? On a graph, consider this graph. So you can see that with these two graphs of mine, which are just line graphs, the first one here, if I want to make it, uh, make it a normal equation, it will be y is equal to um, 3x over 2 minus 4, right? And then with this one here, it will be y is equal to negative 2x plus 3, right? So if you just solve them, by the way, you divide everything by 2 and then get rid of all the letters and leave y on its own. And that's how I got those two equations. For me to find this point, it means I must equate these two things. So I will say, um, I will call this one the f and then I will call this one the g. So it means I will say that f is equal to g in order to find where they are intersecting. And this will be 3 over 2x minus 4, and this must be equal to negative 2x plus 3. And then quickly, let's just solve for this. I'm just going to solve the x, and then the y will substitute it. If I solve the x, it will be 3 over 2x plus 2x is equal to uh, 3 plus 4, right? So I took the x to the left-hand side, the constants to the right-hand side. And then I will multiply everything by 2 in order to get rid of the fraction, which will be 3x plus 4x equal to, this will be 7. Multiply it by 2, it will be 14. So this will be 7x equals to 14. Then my x will be equal to 2. Let's just go verify. Let me use a different color so you can see. The point of intersection is actually at x equal to 2. How did I get the y? It will be you use any of the equations you want. So let's maybe take g because it's easier since it doesn't have a fraction. It will be y is equal to minus 2 into 2 plus 3. So minus 2 by 2 is negative 4, plus 3 will be negative 1. So you can see negative 1 is there. So that's how you then find this, right? So what do you do? Equate them and then solve simultaneously. So as I said, the point of intersection of these two graphs will be at 2 and minus 1, as I showed you the working out. Now, the point of intersection of these two graphs, it being at 2 and minus 1, means that the x is equal to 2 and the y equals to minus 1 are said to satisfy the equations simultaneously, right? So if I plug them simultaneously into the equation, the equation will always be true. That's what satisfy the equation really means. So in simple terms, if I said to you, find the point of intersection of these two graphs, you will solve them simultaneously and you will get the values that satisfy them 
in that particular way. And then a linear and a quadratic system now, if I combine a linear graph and a, a quadratic graph, this can be represented by a line and a parabola in the xy plane, right, in the Cartesian plane. And then each intersection of this, right, which is the line in the parabola, represents the solution to the system. Solution in what sense? Where the graphs are intersecting one another. Let's make a typical example with this. If I give you f of x and g of x, when x is minus 2, this will be uh, minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. If it's minus 1, it will be 0. If it's 0, it will be positive 1. If it's 1, it will be 2, and then it will be 3, right? That's only for f. Let's go for g. For g, if it's minus 2, it will be negative 2 squared minus 1, right? Which will be 4 minus 1, and that is 3. And then negative 1 squared will be positive 1 minus 1. That gives me 0. And then 0 squared minus 1 will be at minus 1. And then 1 squared minus 1 will be at 0. Right? 1 squared minus 1 will definitely be at 0, yes. And then 2 uh, squared minus 1 will also be at 3. And then if I plot my equations, then it will look like this, right? So minus 2 goes with 3 there. 2 goes with 3 as well. Uh, negative 1 goes with... Um, negative 1 goes with 0 and positive 1 goes with 0, and then minus 1 goes with that. And then my straight line will be that. So, visually, this graph, you can see that they are intersecting at this point and at that point, right? But if I did not give you the graph, how would you solve those? You would quickly uh, equate these and solve, right? So let me show you. Firstly, we'll say the point of intersection of these two graphs will be, as we said, minus 1 with 0 and 2 with 3, right? Because we can see them on the graph. But if I did not give you that, how would you do it? So you would quickly say um, f is equal to g, remember that. And that will be x squared, uh, x I mean, so it will be just x, not x squared, that is the f, right? So it will be x plus 1 equals to x squared minus 1. You solve this, guys. This becomes x squared uh, minus x and then minus 2 equal to 0. You solve this, it will be x minus 2x plus 1 using factorization. So my first x value will be at positive 2 and then the other one will be at minus 1. So let's see. There. That's negative 1. Where is 2? There. So it is intersecting at 2 there. You see? And then you can substitute this in either one of the two equations to get the y values. So the point of intersection of these two graphs is not only at one point, right? It will be at minus 1 with 0, and it will be at 2 with three. All right, so you please need to know that. How do I find the point of intersection again? You equate the two equations. Equate the equations. All right, so please just note that. Now, when they want you to analyze the two graphs, they will say, what does f of x greater than g of x? Or f of x less than g of x. What is the value that satisfies that condition? Now, I want you to understand what this means first. It simply means that f is above g. That's all. With this one, it means f is below g. Right? So, we go to the graph. Let me just change my color so I can highlight for you. Uh, where it is above, I will start with the point of intersection. There's the point of intersection, right? I want where f is above. And remember, the f was the straight line. So where it is above, 
uh, if you look at this uh, region here, the G is above, the F is below. So it does not satisfy that. But here, the F is above, the G is below. The G is above, the F is below. So it is between those two values where that thing is true. With the second one, where F is below, it means that it will be wherever I didn't say it works. So this is number one, and this will be for number two. How do I write that solution? You will write the solution as, for this first one, it will be X must be trapped between two and minus one. So in that region, this thing is satisfied. And then for this one, it will be X must be less than negative one or my X must be greater than positive two and that will be satisfied. So that's how you analyze this. If they include a bar, you know, they're just talking about equality, then you can talk about them being equal. Now, just to summarize what we've looked at, remember every type of function has its own graph with a particular shape and unique features. Some have two asymptotes, some have one, some have a turning point, some do not have a turning point. And then you need to look at the shape and the features of the parent graph and see how it moves and becomes the other functions. Guys, I hope this has clarified a few things about functions and how to look at them. Please remember, if you don't understand something, try to write it in simple terms, in simple English. Like f greater than g means f is above g. And then you will understand it. From me to you, the maths doctor, I hope you've been having fun as much as I have. Until next time. But remember, maths is food for the soul. Mm -hmm.